I also want to say ACDC when I say APDG. Alright, so today it is Foundation Friday. This is where I try out a new foundation every single Friday on my channel. Today we're talking about a product that kind of blew up on Instagram because of this photo. They have an amazing shade range, which is kind of what made it blow up. So this is the APDG Longwear Liquid Pigment. You can buy these in three different sizes. This is the kind of sample size, which is 0.33 fluid ounces. And this retails for $18, which I feel like is pretty pricey for only 0.33 ounces of product, especially when the next size up, the full ounce is $24. So it's definitely a better deal to get the one ounce size. So reading some of the claims on the website, it says this is a longwear liquid pigment with built-in color correctors, primer, and HD photo finish ingredients. All-in-one longwear liquid pigment provides buildable medium coverage that dries to a soft matte photo finish look that's silky to the touch. Water, sebum, sweat, and transfer resistant. You can technically use these on your lips as well, which I thought was pretty cool as like a liquid lipstick, I'm assuming. It's vegan, fragrance-free, oil-free, paraben-free, and cruelty-free. This pigment comes in 33 shades. I have the two lightest shades, which are CC00 and CC01. I'm gonna insert swatches right here of these two shades compared to some of the other foundations I own. All right, so swatch time right here is the APDG Longwear Liquid Pigment in the lightest shade they make, CC00. Next over is the same thing in CC01. So there's quite a bit of a difference between these two shades, but it kind of makes sense because this one is pretty much like a white mixer. Technically, you could use it to lighten the shade. This one is still pretty dark, though, for being a 01 shade. Next over is the Cover Effects Custom Cover Drops in N10, Dermablend Flawless Creator Drops in N0, Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation in 0.5, Pure Cosmetics Baradol in Porcelain, Dermacol 208, and Milk Makeup Blur Liquid Foundation in Fair. When I'm filming this, it's actually October 3rd because these videos are pre-recorded since I'm currently on Accutane when you guys are seeing this. So as of right now when I'm filming this, I don't see the shade CC00 listed on their website anymore. It doesn't even have the actual page saying sold out, it's just not listed there. So I tweeted them asking what was up with that, if it's discontinued or what's going on. And they said CC00 is not discontinued and it should be coming back up. So hopefully by the time this video goes up, the shade CC00 is still on there. I have my emails with the order confirmation shipping everything right here. And something I will say is that it took a very long time to get here. I ordered this on August 6th. I was planning on including this in 15 days of foundation and it didn't ship until September 18th. So it took over a month to even ship. I know that they're a new small brand and they got a ton of press and everything about this. So that's probably why, but just be aware that if you're gonna order this, it might take a long time to actually get to you. So this is an interesting one. In this video, you'll actually see me apply this a couple different ways, but here we go. If you're excited for Foundation Friday, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see what I think of the APDG Longwear Liquid Pigments, you're in the right place. Just keep watching. Okay, I haven't done my hair yet, so it's kind of a hot mess right now. Right now it is 9.45 October 3rd when I'm filming this. So I've already washed, moisturized, and I primed half of my face again using the Laura Mercier Foundation Primer. This is the prime side right here. It says that there's a primer built into it, but because I'm assuming some people will wear a primer, and I usually do too, I'm going to try it with the primer on half my face. On half my face, I'm gonna apply it with the brush, on the other half with a sponge, just to see which one I like better. So I haven't done the swatches for these yet, but there is quite a big shade jump between 00 and 01, which could be nice because this could be more of like a mixing product. Wait, is this white? Okay, this is not what I was expecting. So there's like a lipstick applicator. So this looks pretty white. I do think there's a little bit of like cream color in there. It's not pure white, but this is definitely more of like a mixing foundation, at least for me on my skin tone. So zero one definitely looks a bit dark for me. So I'm gonna end up mixing these two shades. So I'm gonna try mixing about half, half. There's a tiny bit less of the white right now. So they're supposed to be like pigments. So I'm assuming you need less than you would a normal foundation, I hope. Let's try this shade out. The zero one shade is pretty yellow toned, a little bit orangey actually. So let's start out with the brush on this side. This is the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. Feels pretty stiff. Dries down pretty quick once you put it on your face. It's really matte. For some reason, I was thinking it was gonna be more dewy. It also says that it dries down a bit darker on your skin. I already used up that amount on the back of my palette, but I'm mixing some more. It says medium buildable coverage. I would say I'm using definitely a decent amount, like quite a bit of product, and I'm barely getting medium coverage. I feel like you would go through this pretty quickly and it is very liquidy. Okay, sponge time, hopefully the shade will match. 
the other side. To get medium coverage, you really have to use a lot of product. Like I already used up Again, that amount that I put out, which usually that amount would cover definitely half my face, maybe a little bit more. It also says this is buildable, so I do want to try and build this up. I think I'm getting about the same coverage brush and sponge side. I'm going to try and build this up with a sponge, kind of do like a thin second layer, mostly on my acne to see if we can build it. My lash extensions are falling out. I'm pre-filming these, but you guys are going to be seeing them over a span of like two months, so... Don't worry, my lashes have not been falling out for two months. By the way, on their website, it does say when you do a second layer, let it dry first, the first layer, and then go in for the second, and my skin is totally dry. It sets down very fast. It's transferring. It's transferring a tiny bit, but not bad at all. What is happening over here? Definitely doesn't look that great. It's doing some weird stuff, so it looks very patchy. I don't know if the color is showing up on camera. I don't think it is because I can't see it in the viewfinder. It looks super weird and patchy right here. It's like lighter right here. And then I have some weird patchiness, like almost where it didn't blend together. Ooh, that does not look good. I think the not prime side does look better with this one, especially on my forehead, I notice it. On this side, it seems to be like caking up a little bit around my eyebrow and it just looks a bit heavier over here. It doesn't look good. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get really up close. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this. I can't really see the viewfinder right now, so but around here, and then let's see if you can see the eyebrow. Oh, I think you can. Right here, what is happening? Wait, come back and focus. It also looks a little weird up here. It just looks like very textured, clinging weird. You definitely don't need to powder your face. Like it totally sets down almost to a powder finish which is why it's kind of confusing that it's buildable because since it does set down to a powder, it's almost like putting a liquid on top of a powder at that point, but it says that it's buildable. I'm definitely not liking this right now. I do have plans today, so hopefully this wears better throughout the day. Oh God, my upper lip looks really bad. Not good. So we're gonna call the check-in time, 10 o'clock. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. Okay, I just wanna show you guys this while I'm in the process because yikes right now is one word to describe all this. So I wasn't planning on setting my face because like I said, it's a total powder finish, but the more I was looking at my face, it was so uneven and like weird coloring. It's just like certain areas are super dark. So I thought maybe I should try a powder to even it all out. So I put just on this half of my face right now as a powder, it's a Laura Geller Balance and Brighten powder, one of my favorites. And I don't even think it's showing up on camera. I hope it is. Let me preface this by saying this powder usually even smooths can kind of fix a lot of foundations and just make it look more flattering on the skin. In certain areas, it is just like so weird. I don't think it's even showing up on camera. In real life, you can see a line right here where the powder is and where it's like a little bit lighter. I mean, look at this. This almost reminds me of what happened with the Soap and Glory foundation, but again, even with the Laura Geller powder, it's not like I could put a liquid on top of here, it did the same thing. It just looks very bad. Whoa. So you guys just saw what it looked like in natural lighting on the vlog camera. I would not wear this again. I probably would not go out of the house like this. I mean, it's not even showing up on camera, you guys. It looks, it looks very bad to the point where I think even if you weren't into makeup, you would notice that my skin looks like shit. So I was kind of going back and forth on what to do with this. So I think what I'm gonna do is take all of this off and actually try this shade as a mixing shade. So I'm gonna try mixing it in with another foundation since off the bat, I would not recommend wearing this alone. I definitely wouldn't wear it a second time alone just so we can do a full day wear test and this isn't just like a total fail. Hopefully I can find a way to make this work. So I'm gonna take all this off and I will be back for round two. Okay, so clean faced. I don't think it's ever felt so good to wash my face. My eyelashes now look extra janky, so yay. So I don't have primer on because I do think the not prime side looked better. So when I was trying to think of a foundation to mix this with, I wanted something that was darker because this is obviously going to lighten it and that actually had more coverage than this. So normally when I text mixing products, I'll try it with the CoverGirl Clean Matte BB. That with this, I can tell would just be a total disaster. So I'm going to try mixing it with the Dermablend Smooth Liquid Camo. I have a whole other video on this. I love this foundation. I just wish the shade worked for me. This is the lightest shade linen. I also have cream. They're both way too dark and very, very yellow. So let's try mixing these, see what happens. We can just hope that this works better as a mixer. It almost like instantly mattifies it. You can even see on the palette, like it looks thicker. 
So let's try a sponge first on this side just to switch it up. Hopefully this works. It dries so fast. So the Smooth Liquid Camo is very dewy, moisturizing. This 100% is making it look super matte. Mixed in, it definitely looks much better than it did on its own. It still doesn't look good. I think I'm just gonna sponge it with this because I know I like the sponge better. Getting better coverage for sure, mixing it in with the Derma Blend. It still looks pretty heavy even with a sponge and mixing it in with like a super dewy foundation. That Derma Blend one makes your skin super smooth. It feels really lightweight. It just looks like makeup-y. I can see it on my face. I'm gonna just see if I can build this up just on a tiny area down here. So if it's a disaster, it's okay. I don't think this is buildable. I think it totally cakes up and gets a weird texture when you try and build it. I would not build this. I think this is like a one layer kind of thing. I don't know, I still don't think I would use this even as a mixer because I don't think it makes my skin look good at all. Dry skin, I could just see this clinging to every little thing. If you have any kind of texture, acne, I don't know, even on the areas where I don't, like it just doesn't look that great. But I think my face is definitely more wearable right now, so I am gonna do the full wear test. Hopefully when I put on my under eye concealer now, it won't get all weird blending out. I'm gonna just do like a very tiny amount of concealer and just keep it right underneath my eyes. I'm not like pulling it down or anything, just to try and avoid that. So right now, what time is it? 10.30, so that's when we're calling the new check-in time. I'm not gonna powder my face with this. Since it has kind of a similar effect, I do think it would just get weird with powder on top of it again. I'm gonna apply the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's now 11.07. My thoughts are exactly the same. So on the rest of my face, I use the Kevin Aquan Tropical Nights. Use this shade as a contour. I have on the CYO Bronzing Rocks as like a blush and then the CYO Bronze and Highlighting Palette. This is such a beautiful highlighter. There it is. I did a whole kind of first impressions video thing on CYO, so I'll put that in the eye over here. My eyes are like a total random mix of bronzers and contours and whatever. Lips, L'Oreal Tongue Tied, my favorite, and the CYO Lip Gloss in the shade Your Best Side. Check-in time again is 10.30. The next check-in I do will probably be in the car because I'm going to be out. But I'll see you guys in a few hours in natural lighting. Okay, so it's actually 7.30 right now. Checking in in the middle of the day was kind of a fail. It's like the theme of this whole video. I was basically non-stop all day and when I was in a place where I could film it was in a parking garage and it was way too dark and you wouldn't have been able to see anything so it's been on for nine hours at this point and my face has actually looked pretty good throughout the day like it's definitely looked better throughout the day the smooth liquid camo holds up pretty great so I'm not surprised there but I'm glad that the other product didn't really break it down majorly or anything so I'm gonna zoom you in but I would say after nine hours it looks pretty good for me I'm not getting any major creasing or separation. Obviously the center of my forehead still doesn't look great because it hasn't really stuck on there the whole day. Since the APDG is, I always wanna say ACDC when I say APDG. Since the APDG is kind of low medium coverage and pretty heavy looking on my skin, I don't really see myself mixing it in with a whole lot of foundations, if any. It just doesn't look that great on my skin, so it doesn't really make sense to, to mix it. This kind of reminds me of the Soap and Glory, I think I said this earlier, the Soap and Glory One Heck of a Blot Foundation, which I have a whole video on, which was also a complete fail, but the way that this looked on my skin on its own looked really similar to that, and I know some people really like that foundation, so maybe that might be a good guide. If you liked that foundation, you might like this one. Me, personally, that one looked like shit sees on my skin, so, so did this. This one but let me know what you guys think of this foundation if you tried it this is a smaller kind of indie brand so i don't mean to totally shit on them or anything like i always say this is just my experience with the product you might have a totally different one this is just my opinion watch other videos do your own research you might like it but i am always going to be honest with you guys about how something works for me that is that if you guys enjoyed this video and you're excited for foundation fridays to continue don't forget to give this a thumbs up it helps me out i love you guys thanks for watching see you in my next video bye